As someone who's been married for almost two decades, I can confidently tell you, do not do it. Because what's going to happen is your wife is going to get it in her head that she knows how to pick out a good film. And you will be subjected to countless trash movies that go straight to streaming services. One such film was recommended last night called Run Sweetheart Run. And I wanted to run away from the TV as fast as I could. My wife is on the socials, so she's constantly getting bombarded by recommendations from influencers telling her exactly what type of movie she should be into. One such film that came up a couple days ago for her was Run Sweetheart Run, and she kept saying, Adam, I, I'm telling you, they're saying this one's really good. It's not going to be like all the other shit we've been watching for months now. It is really a good horror thriller flick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, okay, okay, I kept saying to her knowing in the back of my mind's eye that this is not going to be the case. But I gave it a chance. And after finishing the film, divorce is now officially on the table. Let's talk about Run Sweetheart Run. Before I get into a review that will probably have spoilers in it because I don't give a crap about this movie and you shouldn't either, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Adam does movies. I'm, I'm Adam. I do movies. Every week I post new movie reviews, rants, roasts, live streams, lots of movie stuff all the time. Would appreciate you sticking around. Ella Belinsky from the hit Charlie's Angels remake movie a couple years ago, and I use hit as ironically as humanly possible, plays Sherry, a single mom just trying to have it all. After a couple stressful days at work, her boss treats her to a blind date with a very prominent wealthy man. Really shaping up to be a Cinderella story here. Unfortunately, Agent Coulson wasn't so forthcoming with what this date was going to entail. It starts basic enough, pretty standard, dinner rollerblading with balloons, and then of course getting mauled at the house where you have to run away hoping to survive the night. And that's going to be the plot of Run Sweetheart Run, a woman trying to get out of the cold, heartless grip of man. And I don't just mean the billionaire, I mean every man that's in this movie will be trash. Because all men are! Listen, I pride myself very much on not being the boy who cried woke. I actually hate the term, and I think it discredits a ton of movies. It's like any time there's a black person in a film now, it's, oh, it's woke, it's woke, oh, there's a strong female lead, it's woke. No, come on, what, what are we doing anymore? It's, it's kind of pathetic. But this movie's fucking woke. <laughs> it's a feminist-driven film in the worst way possible. The messaging is so hit over your head. Believe women. Men are bad. They have ill intentions. It's just so lame. When she escapes his mansion, she runs down the street where she runs into two women. She asks to use their phone to eventually call the cops. First, she's going to call the housekeeper, but forgets the housekeeper's number because she lost her phone. It's a whole thing. But she calls the cops saying that she's being attacked. There's a guy trying to kill her. The cops show up and they're like, oh, she's black. Uh, was she on drugs? Probably. Let's throw her in jail. There's no questions asked. She's got a fucking gash on her forehead. She's got cuts all over. She's bleeding. They throw her in jail with one other woman in there. And this woman's like, I know the guy you're talking about. He's dangerous. You need to get out of here. He's a man who controls men. That's verbatim what she says. A man who controls men. Powerful stuff. This woman conveniently had a lot of information to give her, including how she needs to get in contact with the first lady. The first lady apparently can help her get out of this situation she's found herself in. But that's just one of two major concerns this film's going to address. The first being, what do you do about that pesky period, ladies? This is the longest running tampon ad I've ever sat through. We have to witness several scenes of her trying to figure out how to stop the flow. It's dripping all over the place. She's making a real mess of things. We get shower period. We get floor period. We get period all over the dress. I kept wondering how the hell this played into the story at all, but it turns out it actually does. Because this evil dude that's hunting her is not, is not a normal guy. He's a demon. Vampiric in nature, werewolf-esque, uh, it's kind of loose, it's interpretive. It really just an evil, rich, powerful white guy is kind of what they're saying. But he can smell her blood. The blood of a woman is so potent 
It, it lets out such deep, enhanced pheromones that he must have her at all costs, and he can smell her a mile away. He's got a nose for these things. He's also very fast, very strong. You rip the head off of a person with a single swoop. We don't really see any of it. There's some interesting choices in this film, and by interesting, I mean terrible. For starters, the film's called Run, Sweetheart, Run. And every time she's going to run, giant red letters say run on the screen. Letting the audiences know that this is a bad scenario to get in. Really, it's talking to the women out there. Hey ladies, if you find yourself in a room with a guy, and he's giving you a drink, and he's being a little weird, a little skittish, this is when you run. Hey ladies, if you're in the bathroom behind a 7-Eleven and there's a guy smashing on the door trying to get in, this is when you run. You know, before watching this movie, I had no idea women had these struggles. It's really eye-opening stuff. What an experience for me to learn, as a man, how I can better myself. And approach females. It turns out you shouldn't be yelling at them and pounding on doors when they're using the bathroom. I, I'm taking notes, copious notes as this film's going. Now this isn't the fault of Ella Belinsky. She does a fine job here with the crap dialogue she has to work with and the kind of weird situations she finds herself getting into. Like at one point she has to pull out her used tampon and throw it over a bridge so that the rich guy Ethan follows the scent away from her. I did a quick glance at IMDB and it says this movie came out in 2020. So it might not even be new and Lindsay really screwed me over by recommending this film because it's probably not trending and it just showed up in her algorithm for who fucking knows. Either that or it's been shelved for four years and they just shat it out now onto streaming. Either way, it's entirely possible. In either case, it's rated R. I'm not sure why because almost every time something interesting might happen, the camera pulls away. And this is the weirdest crap ever. So the bad guy Ethan breaks the fourth wall in this several times. The first is when we are going to see some bad stuff happen. She enters his house at the end of the night. He's about to close the door as the camera pushes in and he holds out his hand and he says, mm-mm. Mm -mm, not gonna happen back up and the camera actually moves backwards because we're the audience and we're apparently standing right outside watching this in another point later he's in an alleyway with her and he's about to i guess beat her eat her do something more sketchy i'm not sure what's more sketchy than eating her i guess but the camera's on her and he goes uh-uh go that way look that way and the camera turns away to a homeless man who's just, I guess, watching it happen, kind of going, eh, this is bad. While that scene's playing out, there's another guy that runs the store. And he comes out with a gun and does a warning shot. And he's like, get away from her. And the bad guy goes, what are you going to do? And the dude just leaves. I'm telling you, every guy in this is an absolute jackass. She's beaten to shit, gashed cuts. Can't call the cops, can't trust anyone, so she turns to her ex-boyfriend who picks her up. And he, she gets in the car and he's like, ugh, what do you want? What are we doing? Not concerned at all that she's bleeding out. Barely addresses it. And she's like, you gotta help me. And he's like, ugh, don't say I never did anything for you. Just even reliving this shit is... It's mine. Folks, you can't trust anyone online, okay? Except for me. You can trust me because I don't get paid to promote movies. I have an actual job. This is a hobby secondary job. I don't rely on it for the income, which is a really healthy place to be because there's so many fucking shills out there and peddlers and just straight up liars, bad faith people that they'll, they'll get paid some money to promote a show or movie or they'll do it because they think it's gonna curry favor with a group of people online so they get some clout. There's just so many ways people approach movies now that are disingenuous and have nothing to do with the quality of the film or the watching experience. So when my wife tells me, oh, people are raving about this movie and I sit and watch it, I'm instantly thinking, what the fuck, what was their end goal here? Because this is not good at all. Anyway, I might rant about that whole thing later on a different video, but for right now, I just have to say later on in the film, when she's at her lowest, she suddenly turns into Jane Rambo and puts a red bandana around her head and starts cleaning up her wounds a little bit in the bathroom. And then suddenly four other douchebag guys surround her at a club. Is she gonna go Jane Wick on these guys and suddenly be awesome at fighting? But nothing even happens in that scene. Some other ladies take her away from the situation. And now we have another Charlie's Angels-esque film where there's four gals in the car. They're super awesome badasses. But then no, bad guy shows up, they all die instantly. Like what was the point of any of this? 
Finally, she makes it to the first lady who informs her that the Bible's true, but it's kind of incorrect on some things. Adam was not the firstborn, it was actually Eve. And then God used her rib to make Adam. Because of course, right? Of course. And the first lady is actually the first angel. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is important for some reason. And so with that knowledge in the back of her pocket, she's able to do something. I'm not sure what. This all culminates to a final showdown at a church. And she's going to confront her demon. Literally, because he's the demon. She, of course, wins the day. It's super exciting. She goes back to reunite with her daughter, and we all learn something at the end of the day. We all learn something. It's very, it's powerful stuff, gals. You know, we can do better. Um, we can do a lot better. We can do this type of message without it being smashed over our brains and making every guy look like the villain, the, the worst person on the planet. We can do better. But Run, Sweetheart, Run did not. Uh, this is a shit film. It was a chore to get through. Even with the messaging being super lame and obvious, there's nothing exciting going on because the camera pushes away every time some action's gonna take place. Weird use of the run over the top of the video. Odd use of fourth wall breaking. The acting is serviceable, but nothing compelling. It's just all around a miserable watch. I wanna hear from you though. Did you waste your time with this one? Have you heard about it? Probably not, but now you've heard about it, sadly. Let me know in the comments. Please think about subscribing. Again, I post movie content every week. I focus on a lot of the blockbusters, obviously, but then sometimes I just do these streamers in the hopes that we'll find a gem somewhere in the rough, a diamond in the rough, you could say. Like the video, hit the notification bell. Check out my second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I'm focused on comedy and doing storytelling over there. Would love to have you stick around. And if you really love what I'm doing, maybe think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Adam does movies. Hopefully I see you next time. <laughs> Gotta run.